Marshall Islands for the past couple of years has been focused on mitigation, promoting mitigation, making sure everyone is curbing their emissions. We developed an energy roadmap to eliminate fossil fuels and transition to renewable energy by 2050. Very, very forward thinking. And we did that first. We know we're one of the first countries to implement that and to also submit our NDCs, our nationally determined contributions. But then we realized, you know, some, a, a scientist came here, his name is Dr. Chip Fletcher, and gave us really startling climate science that told us that we can no longer just plan for mitigation. We had to plan for the worst. We had to start adapting. And so that's what we're working on right now is that national adaptation plan, the NAP, which we're also calling our survival plan. The Marshall Islands is only two meters above sea level. So that means there's no mountains, there's no larger island to go to. We as Atoll Nations all, all kind of share that identity, that vulnerability. The latest uh, science that we've been given is that the best estimates we've been given is that there will be a sea level rise of 5.9 feet in 80 years. So that's all of the Marshall Islands submerged in 80 years because we're only two meters above sea level, which is about six feet, right? So what you have to also remember is that RMI contributes 0.00001% of the world's global emissions. And so what you're seeing is the worst impacts in the region to to all, all atoll nations from the countries that contribute the least. So the National Adaptation Plan is... Uh, is the way we're going to protect ourselves, you know, and some of that is going to be extreme solutions. And some of those extreme solutions are building islands, elevating islands. And then it becomes, where do we get that funding? How will we decide where we will, be, we will build the islands? Which islands will be elevated? Which communities will be moved? What will happen to our cultural um, protocols of land ownership? Lots and lots and lots of questions, but the National Adaptation Plan is the first step towards answering that question. And so that begins first with statements of situation, gathering reports from all of the different sectors. How will your sector of education be impacted by climate change? Well, we have this amount of schools on this number of islands. How will, you know, maybe they'll uh, end up becoming shelters for when there's, you know, high tide floodings. And then gathering all of the science that we have so far. You know, so far, most of the science that we have comes from something called the Reymalak framework. The Reymalak framework is conservation focused and it has some adaptation in it, but you can only conserve to a certain point before the whole island disappears, right? And so that's <laughs> another part of it too. And so we have that science, but not enough. And so I think that what we're really, the questions that we're asking ourselves is listen to and what science is going to inform how we plan for the future. But at the end of the day, we don't want to leave and we don't want to move. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like, um, I, I feel like I'm seeing a, a line from one of my poems, but that's the truth. And I think all of us in the Atoll Nations collectively agree that migration isn't, shouldn't be the only option. It shouldn't be forced migration. So the National Adaptation Plan is our best bet towards making sure that our shorelines are protected, that our community is protected, and that our sovereignty is protected. You know, it's really important that we maintain that sovereignty. Uh, as someone who grew up as an immigrant out in the march, you know, in the U.S., I know how difficult it is to grow, to live in the diaspora. And to think of thousands of us, you know, having to be forced to make that transition, that it won't work, especially with, especially when you're looking at the U.S. right now with its current uh, immigration policies and, you know, the uh, with with the outright racism towards people of color and immigrants also. So, I guess these are all different things we're taking into consideration. I think I I just wanted to emphasize that that we are here, we're doing the work, and that while migration is an option, we are doing everything we can to protect our sovereignty. At the end of the day, we can't rely on the rest of the world anymore. And I think that's where we're at. 